Should we really let the newbie take night shift on her own? Isn't it? I scoffed inwardly as my coworkers talked about me behind my back again. I'd really only gone to the loo, but there they were, chatting as if I had left the place completely. Didn't they realize just how loud they were? I can handle myself just fine. I might have been new to this particular Burger King, but I'd manned the night shift down the road in another chain for a year prior. I could handle a drunk group or two. Heck, on my nights off, I was part of the drunk groups. Oh, uh, Eve, sorry. Jeremiah was a lanky kid, younger than me, but already a manager. He had a forgettable face and eyes that constantly rested on my chest. You want more cash, is that it? split the shift with the unknowing newcomer or something? Were you expecting me to pay you to stay with me or something? Perhaps I was a bit mean, but I was quite used to this behavior. After all, I've done it too. Fear-mongering newcomers so they'd split their cash with you to take care of them was pretty common. Sadly for Jeremiah, I wasn't born the day before. No! His voice broke halfway through the word, and the kid quickly shook his head, embarrassed. If she doesn't want company, we might as well get going. I hate being here at night, too. But shouldn't we tell her about... Andrea was a skinny chick, clad in black all day, every day. She looked on edge, which I couldn't help but roll my eyes at. Was she scared of the peering eyes of university kids that could turn more serious at night? A few minutes passed as the pair picked up their stuff. They were still talking quietly, but I didn't bother to listen. I preferred working alone, mostly because that meant I could play whatever music I wanted and study while still keeping an eye out for whoever that needed a fix. Still, I was in an unfamiliar environment. It was a bit odd, not knowing the exact layout of the restaurant or even which ice cream machine was supposed to be broken, ahem, being cleaned, at what time. Half an hour into me just browsing my phone, the lights directly over my head flickered. Had I blinked, I'd missed the brief darkness that descended upon the counter. Looks like the bulb needs to be changed soon, huh? I couldn't help but yawn. It'd been a long day. And yet, I knew that it wasn't a good idea to nap. Not when it was so late. While it was rare for anything to happen... I nearly jumped out of my skin at the loud noise, but it was just thunder. Oh, who are you? I mean, welcome to Burger King. No answer came, which made me feel a bit wary. I was no stranger to weird people. Heck, I was weird myself, but it was still strange. Are you here to eat or are you lost? It is storming outside. The trees surrounding the restaurant shook with the force of the wind. Still, you'll need to buy something to stay here. Sorry, but those are the rules. Whoa, what? Huh? Ugh, who is it now? What do you mean? Wait, how do you even have my... I slammed my phone on the counter. Why was that kid texting me all of a sudden? And why did I feel so much fear creeping into my heart? It has to be a prank. Yeah, the little... I shook my head quickly, trying my best to not curse on the clock. However, I nearly shrieked when I saw it. The person from before. Again, but... Something was wrong with them. Where? Where? What? What do you want? (laughs) I knew it was too weird, too elaborate to be a prank, but I had no idea what to do. I felt as if my heart was beating in my throat. My hands were sweaty and I was cold, but hot too at the same time. I wanted to run away, but... I was so worried that it would follow me. What do you mean?
square. Where is my bear? What bear was she looking for? Just who is she? All I had to do was wait until the morning. Jeremiah said I'd be fine, and yet I didn't feel safe. Who would have, really? I tried to think of a way to get out, maybe through the back door, or was it really the best to stay quiet? Hey, I'm going to that meeting with corporate I told you about. You're acting manager until I get back, okay? Got it, boss. Good luck. Thanks, but I won't need it. Ugh, I hate this song. Today on Background Chit Chat, we'll be talking about the importance of scrubbing your toilet bowl on a regular basis. Ew, no. Anything but that. Hey you! Yeah you! Are you headed towards your doom? Then you need the all new, new and improved, upgraded deluxe opponent repellent! <sighs> you know what? How about silence then? <sighs> Come on people, I got somewhere to be. Jeez, this guy is impatient. Bad traffic. We'll be there soon. Huh, dramatic much? Maybe I should have just walked. No, that would have been suspicious. Who walks to a meeting with corporate? Huh, who is this guy anyway? What exactly am I getting myself into? I mean, what kind of guy calls himself the Kingmaker? That's what my son would call cringe, I think. Honestly, I'd call it that too. Oh well, I just hope his burgers are half as good as he claims. Alright, looks like I'm here. This is it? Which one am I supposed to go to? Unit 3 it is, then. Whoa! What the... Who are you? Ha ha ha! Gotcha, didn't I? That's just a cheap costume. I'm the Kingmaker. Oh, well, I'm glad to finally meet you in person, Mr. Kingmaker. Leave all the formalities at the door and come inside. Uh, okay then. Thank you. Please, have a seat. We have much to discuss. <sighs> That's right. You're supposed to get me ahead of the Burger Patty game so I can beat out all the other franchises in the area. How exactly do you plan on doing that again? With higher quality beef, of course! So, I just have to use your patties instead of the ones the supply chain sends me, and then everybody will start to notice that my burgers taste better than all the other Burger Kings? Yeah, exactly! But what makes your patties any better than the regular ones? How do you make them? That's a trade secret, of course. Well, how will I even know if they're any good? <laughs> Come on! Don't take me for a crook! I'm gonna let you try one for yourself, of course! I assure you that this is a 100% standard Burger King burger. Except for my patty. Go ahead, eat it. <sighs> this better be good. Mmm! Mmm! Uh, hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. They're, they're actually really good. And here I thought you were going to try and sell me a McDonald's burger. Uh, listen, if you can really provide enough of these patties to service my whole restaurant, <laughs> then we got a deal. So you like it, yes? I'm very pleased. Mm. Uh, I know I already asked, but you gotta tell me. Uh, how did you do this? <laughs> well, if you insist, I'll show you. But first, I must explain. Explain what? What I'm doing here! 
I want to make the best burger that has ever existed, and I'm willing to do anything to make that happen. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Uh, hey, watch it. You run the Burger King, don't you? That makes you the Burger King, does it not? You are in charge of the burgers, so you are their king. Um, I mean, sure, that's one way to put it, but... What the hell is this? Never mind that. Listen to me. In order to create the best burger in the world, I must use you. The Burger King. Your knowledge, your expertise, your discerning taste. I want to create the king of burgers. The Burger King Burger. <laughs> you know that every burger we sell is technically a Burger King Burger. Shut up! That's not what I'm talking about. I want to make the burger of the Burger King. Hey, let go of me. I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> I'm sorry. I know what I'm trying to do doesn't make sense to most. I know you are the Burger King, so you have your own way of doing things. Well, I'm more like a Burger King. <laughs> but you admit it, yes? You are the Burger King. Sure. And the burger I made, it was a good burger? Yeah, it was. The best one I've had in a while. Then I'd like to show you my process. Really? I thought you said it was a trade secret. Ah, forget about all that. Follow me. Whoa. You're not messing around. You really can produce enough to power a whole restaurant. I told you I was serious about my venture. Would you like to take a look at the machinery? Well, the thing is, I don't have anything to do with the meat grinding. That all happens before the meat gets to me. I don't have anything to do with it. Aren't you the slightest bit curious? I guess I'm a little bit curious. Then go ahead and take a look! All right, then. No, I will. What's the meaning of this? What's going on? I told you, Burger King. I want to make a Burger King burger. Stop this. Please, let me go. Shut up. You'll make a great patty. General managers disappear all the time around here. Haven't you ever noticed? What? No, please. Ah! Mmm, <laughs> that smells so good. People think the strangest things happen in haunted mansions or dark places. I was one of those people, until something happened to me that changed my mind. My name is Nick. And this is the story of my first month working at Burger King. At that time of the year, Burger King was looking for new employees to cover vacation shifts, so they were only looking for people to work for three months. Since I was one of those casual employees, I naturally got the off shifts, so I was one of the people in charge of working the night shift, where we were managed by a more senior employee, and most of the new people were in charge of cleaning or cooking. The first few weeks went by really fast. This was my first job, so I was happy to just clean while learning from other employees by taking care of people. I used to get home very late, but I didn't mind, since I lived a few blocks away. Everything was going well at work, until one night something unthinkable happened. We had already closed the doors to the public and were about to leave. We were just a few employees and I was the only one mopping the floors. I was about to finish, only the game section was left. I was just about to finish when suddenly I heard some noises in the ball pit. The ball pit was neither very big nor very flashy. It was somewhat translucent so that the parents could control their children. And it was that very thing that made me make the discovery that I did. The transparency of the ball pit revealed the silhouette of a child inside. How was that even possible? Perhaps one of the parents had forgotten a child. Surely they were looking for him like crazy. I ran towards the ball pit, and when I looked through one of its pipes, I didn't see anything. Hey, guys, come here, quick! I called the rest of the employees without taking my eyes off the ball pit, in case the boy escaped. I didn't see him anymore but I was sure he was still there. 
There was no way he was going anywhere. I told my co-workers everything and we all inspected the place. There was nothing. Are you sure you saw him there? Yeah, not only did I see the shadow across the ball pit, but I heard it too. Maybe he ran away while you were looking for him. Where would he run off to? All the doors are locked and I never let him out of my sight. Andrew, you've been here longer. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, never. I'm sure it was your imagination. There's nothing here. It's too late, guys. Let's get this over with and go home. And with that said, we all left. Everyone was laughing and making jokes about me seeing ghosts, but no one really believed me. I needed to prove to them what I saw was real, and I was going to do it. Over the next few days, I always encouraged them to come at night to see if anything happened, but to my disappointment, it never did. Some time passed and no one believed me anymore. Even I doubted that I had really seen something. But again, when I was alone, it happened again. I was again cleaning the playground area and putting up the chairs when I saw a shadow crawling in the playground. I thought about calling my co-workers, but it could disappear again. So this time, I did the most logical thing I could think of. I took out my cell phone and recorded it. I thought that by recording, the silhouette would surely disappear, but it didn't, and I captured everything on camera. Once I finished recording, I tried to quietly call my colleagues, but no one came. A shadow began to move to the top, where there was a small hole with a plastic grill to keep the children from falling in. I approached the tall tube and looked inside for the child who seemed to be crying, but when I looked again, I saw nothing. Suddenly, the sobbing stopped, the room filled with a long and tedious silence, and I just stared at the tube waiting for the child to appear. I guess it was obvious. Well, at least I have you on camera. Something had pulled me by my feet. At that moment, it was all very confusing. I just remember hitting my back on the ground and feeling that something was pulling me towards the tube below. As I resisted, I saw the inside of the tube for the first time. I saw the boy. He didn't look like an innocent crying child, but like a horrible monster disguised as a child trying to hunt its prey. His skin was dead white, and his eyes had a huge black shadow under them. The shadow grew larger and larger with each passing second, while large red veins were growing out of his eyes and spreading all over his face. I did everything I could to escape. I kicked and screamed as much as I could. Help! Someone help me! This boy's strength was not normal at all. No matter how hard I tried, he kept dragging me slowly with frightening ease. Once I got half of my body into the tube, I tried to hold on to him with my arms. I was able to stop him for a few seconds, but I couldn't hold on any longer. My arms let go of the tube and let the being drag me into it. I felt a hand on my face that pulled me to the center of the ball pit, but suddenly, a hand from outside grabbed my hand and dragged me out of the ball pit tube. It was one of my co-workers. Once I was out, all my co-workers started to join him and pulled me out. Guys, you heard me. You saved me. How could I have not heard you, Nick? I think the whole block heard you screaming. You saw it, didn't you? The ghost boy? No, I didn't see anything. You were alone. But you grabbed my hand. He was pulling me too. I'm sorry to tell you, but no. No one was forcing on the other side. I just grabbed your hand and pulled you. After that, everyone looked at me with concern. The playground was empty. I was alone again. Anyway, this time they would believe me. I took out my cell phone and looked for the recording. They all looked at it in shock and quickly moved away from the tubes. At the same time, I felt something burning in my ankles. When I pulled up my pants, we all saw the same thing. My ankles were red, with the fingerprints of a little boy. The next day, I told my manager everything. I told him that there were witnesses and everything, and without worrying, he said he would take care of it. A week and a half later, I received a dismissal telegram. No matter how much I made a fuss, no one ever did anything about it. 
Something tells me that the manager knew about this, but decided not to do anything about it for fear that they would close the place or remove the games area, which used to attract many families. Today, the ball pit is still there, in the same place. It attacked me at night, but who knows if tomorrow it'll be able to grab a child who's alone, and maybe there will be no one to rescue him. <laughs> 